At 1648 in the Romensky district, 10 green dots appear simultaneously on the Costa 2E2 early warning radar screen. They are flying too low, too slow. The system's algorithm labels them asymmetric air threat. The targets are moving in two messy groups, creeping below the 400-meter optimal detection corridor. The S-400 system is optimized to intercept high-value, fast-moving targets, fighter jets, ballistic missiles. Now the system is faced with 10 targets moving at a speed of 140 kilometers per hour. This is a basic physics problem. Doppler radar is designed to filter clutter, stationary data from the ground, or slow data from thick weather formations. The S-400 radar system works like a highly advanced spam email filter. The filter is trained to instantly delete thousands of junk emails so that one important email from a director can be seen immediately. These drones are trapped. They are designed to look exactly like a slightly suspicious promotional email. Moving too slow to be an important email but too regular to be ordinary spam. The system must hesitate. That hesitation consumes computation time. Using a 48N6DM hypersonic interceptor missile on these targets is an inefficient exchange. But the target is the main pipeline. Procedure is procedure. The order is given. It takes a full eight minutes for the S-400 system to calculate a stable firing solution. The billion-dollar system designed to stop a major conflict must think hard to shoot something slower than a car on the highway. Finally, the acquisition radar activates, painting the targets. Six targets in front suddenly change behavior. They climb in altitude, a deliberate provocation. Two 48N6DM missiles launch from their tubes. Two flashes in the twilight sky. Two targets destroyed. The remaining four targets from the front group turn sharply. They fly straight at the Panzer S-1 battery. Simultaneously, four targets from the rear group appear from a different direction, flying low, targeting the Panzer's eye. This is a saturation attack. The Panzer's combat management system must now track eight independent threats from two different vectors. Computational saturation. Meanwhile, 35 kilometers to the south, three other objects never appeared on any screen. They are flying very low, 50 meters above the ground, using the river's curves as navigation guidance. This is pure inertial navigation, corrected by terrain contour mapping. They do not require a single GPS signal. Three Liu T units, undetected, not on the screen, not in the system. Eight drones are now in lethal range. Defending an asset from a drone saturation attack is like trying to put out eight small fires spreading in a room with only two buckets of water. You might put out one or two, but the others will definitely reach flammable material. The Panzer system reacts as programmed. The twin 30mm autocannons swivel, spewing 5,000 rounds per minute creating a wall of steel and tracers. That steel wall tears apart the four higher flying targets, the decoys that have sacrificed themselves. The Panzer missile system then launches two 57E6 missiles, destroying one more diving target. Suddenly, two manned ZU-23-2 cannons open fire, weapons from the 1960s. The weapon crews react to the visual traces. Manually, they find and shred the last three targets. 1657, the radar screen is clean. 10 out of 10 threats neutralized. The operator reports all Zeni targets are destroyed. The layered system has worked. The expensive S-400 and the Soviet-era ZU-23-2 have worked together. The manual ZU-23-2 crews apparently passed their gunnery test that day. 1659. The three Liu T units reach point zero. Their target is not the command building. Their target is the intersection of three large diameter pipes gleaming in the low sun, running parallel. The three drones are separated by 150 meters. 
They raise their noses, then dive at a 45 degree angle. Geometric precision. The first drone strikes pipe A jet fuel. 50 kilograms of high explosives detonate, tearing 14 millimeter thick steel. 1.5 seconds later. The second drone strikes pipe B diesel. 1.2 seconds after that. The third drone strikes pipe C gasoline. The attack geometry is perfect. Three nearly simultaneous explosions create a harmonic shockwave. Destructive resonance. It is like pushing a swing. If you push at the wrong time, the swing slows. But if you push just as the swing returns, resonance, a small second push, will send it flying higher. Here, the push is the blast wave. The swing is the steel pipe, which is now shattering to pieces. This is not just a leak. This is an infrastructure amputation. The automatic safety valve system was designed to close in case of pressure loss in one line. Now the system is paralyzed. Catastrophic pressure loss in three lines simultaneously causes the valve software to suffer a logic failure. It does not know which line to close. It sends conflicting open and close signals. The resulting reverse shockwave travels tens of kilometers backward, cracking welded joints and damaging pump stations far from the blast site. The fire is just a symptom. The real damage is the systemic failure that paralyzes a logistics artery with a capacity of 7.4 million tons per year. This instantly cuts off the blood supply for strategic air bases and armored depots, forcing the entire military fuel supply chain to switch to trains and trucks, a 20th century method that is slow, expensive, and exposed under 24-7 satellite surveillance. The total cost of the operation, estimated at under $2 million, successfully neutralized infrastructure worth hundreds of millions. Ironically, the operation also defeated the world's most expensive air defense fortress, the S-400 and Pantsir, using three strike drones that never even appeared on a radar screen. In the modern era of conflict, a 400-kilometer distance is no longer measured in distance but in fuel transit time, and that time has just run out. Watch your six.